Good evening. Welcome to the Josh Walensky Show. It's great to be with you again here from Manhattan Neighborhood Network. And uh, today we have a great guest, and uh, she wrote so, two books that I have here, Life in the Jungle and Life Among Native Americans. And before we go into these topics, you know, since you all live in Manhattan, or most of you live in Manhattan, where do you go for a book if you don't want any fuss or muss? If you go to one of the larger bookstores, like the one I go to on 82nd Street, sometimes Henry Kissinger and Susan Sarandon are walking around in, Eli Wallach, uh, you can go to the information desk and order any book even a non-popular book. You can even order an unknown DVD or an unknown CD. I've done it. I've done it. I won't mention any names, but go to one of these and they'll treat you like royalty. And if you're smart, you'll get a membership card and you'll get an additional discount. That's where you can get these two books by my guest, Gabriel Solomon who's an energy healer and an author. And in uh, deference and respect to uh, Dean Loren, who's in the control room, Native American, tell us about life among Native Americans, Gabriella. Hi, Josh. What's it about? Why did you write it? How did you write it? And so <laughs> on. Why did I write it? Because I, I wrote it uh, because uh, my spirit guides asked me to write um, about uh, the experience that I had um, with my past life sessions. In year 2007, I hired a very gifted medium, and we had um, 14 sessions, which were all recorded, hour and a half sessions, where, where I was um, an interviewer. I interviewed spirits, some of them very highly evolved spirits, um, who helped us, like Galileo Galilei came through, the spirit of Galileo came through. Um, um, one of them was Edgar Casey. So, as I said, highly of all spirits who were granted access to Catholic records to retrieve, uh, mem to retrieve data about my past lives, about not just mine, but of uh, Marina Frost who is uh, in this book, it's a story about two spirits who incarnate from one life to another. Uh, female energy, or my higher self, is named Gea, and male energy, Zen. So two of us, Zen is Marina Frost, incarnate from one life to another, and I'm writing a collection of books about that. So Life Among Native Americans is the, my latest, my newly published book. And um, it, uh, it tells a story about uh, our life in, uh, as when we were part of Coast Salish tribe in uh, Pacific Northwest. That was around 1450s, 15th century. Uh, in this life, uh, Marina was a um, very, very popular and well-known um, medicine man, like a shaman. He had a huge following, and I was his assistant, just like in this life. He's doing a lot of spiritual and healing work through music uh, uh, and through the project that we work on, Mission of Love, multimedia project, Mission of Love. And I was his assistant in that life as well as in this life, not only his assistant but also director of this multimedia project, Mission of Love. Yes, and you know, the Native Americans are really very much in touch with spirits, yes. lots of spirits. And uh, what spirit did you symbolize? And what spi spirits did Marino symbolize well, and uh, stand for? Native Americans have a belief that uh, they believe in totem animals and the spirits of an animal. Because uh, it's uh, the spirit of the animal that represents, um, represents what I write in this book, I write about Tamanoas. Tamanoas are spirit guardians, and uh, it was in tradition of this people, of us in the past, 
to send children on a vision quest at the early age so they can find their tamanoas, their, their spirit guardian. And a lot of times those spirit guardians would appear to children as some sort of animal. I, I strongly believe that wolf is my spirit animal because I can associate with the characteristics of the wolf. And regarding Zen, I strongly believe because of his leadership skills in this life and because of his uh, wisdom and healing abilities, I strongly believe that his spirit animal, totem animal, was bear. So. Um, if you if you don't mind, I would like to uh, play uh, the trailer uh, to a teaser video teaser about my latest book, so people can find maybe a ah, little let's do that. That's maybe a little bit more. Let's do that. Uh, let's let's see tease the them. trailer. It's a teaser. <laughs> yeah, that's really that's really. Uh, I would like to. Thank you. I, I just can't begin to tell you how profound the messages are that these videos convey. As you know, I'm a volunteer at Downtown Television Center and at uh, the Harlem uh, Community Video Center, and I haven't seen, or even, and I'm down here at m and I haven't seen such beautifully constructed videos in a long, long time. And, I, and Gabriella, I think you <laughs> and Marina should go down 
and teach down <laughs> at these places, and you should certainly be at the open center. Now, I was with you a mm -hmm. few weeks ago yes. at uh, Alan Steinfeld's Film Festival, and we saw this wonderful film about the 13 elderly shamans, shamans who went around the world. Mm -hmm. And, you know, for the audience, for the benefit of the audience, I also saw a film at the um, Thalia, the new Thalia on 95th Street, about a couple who had a retarded child and took him to Mongolia mm -hmm. to be treated by the shamans. Mm -hmm. Tell us a little about the shamans. What do they do? How do they work? And the power that they have in healing people. First of all, I want to emphasize one thing, and that is that we all have healing abilities. We all have healing powers. It's all, it's all a matter of tapping into these powers. So the only difference between regular people and people who do any kind of he energy work and healing work, whether they're called shamans or medicine men like the one I'm writing about, about Marina and his past life, they all knew how to tap in this source of universal energies and use them to help people. And another important thing is uh, that I want to emphasize is every sickness, everything, uh, every um, disorder that, that manifests itself on a physical level in our body is a reflection of what's going on in our psyche, but even higher than that in our spirit. It's the spirit, if, if, something un, if there's something unhealthy lies in our spirit, and we don't work on that, it will manifest on our physical body. Even if child, for example, is born, think, people think that children are born innocent. They are innocent when they're born, but this child may be born with, uh, uh, with some issues, health issues, and everybody's wondering what, what did this child do? Why is this child suffering as, as yeah. the child that you just mentioned? Yeah, this child was more autistic than he was retarded. In any and yet case, the shaman had to punch the father into the s in the stomach to help the child. So it was the father who was maybe the key for that. Because what I was trying to say is that this child that was born autistic, or children who are born with mental retardation or or any other issues, those are spirits who had maybe long past of wrongdoings, and now they're suffering the consequences and. Perhaps they are even the ones who chose the sufferings in this life. Or the, these are spirits who came. Another thing is they may came as, um, a to, as so that parents could work on something spiritually. They are just a test for the parents. So there's a reason for everything. Everything has a very strong, con it's a very, there's a very strong connection between what is physical and what happens on a spiritual level. Mm -hmm. The one cannot go without the other. It's interconnected. Mm -hmm. And the shamans are just those that know how to tap, as I said, tap into the source of a problem. Because they're not healing the body directly. They're healing the spirit and they're invoking the uh, universal healing energies to work for on, on a physical, spiritual, first spiritual level, and then physical level. Mm -hmm. Yeah, in such a, um, a, a society as we live in, where there is a quite so much uh, ambivalence and ignorance concerning all these uh, uh, healing processes that are really uh, in our subconscious or hidden. I mean, this is really one of the, uh, this is at the very a essence or nucleus of, of reincarnation, yes. where people subconsciously are aware of their past yes. and their history. 
but they refuse to deal with it. Exactly. And then you turn on the tube or something, and then you lose it all together. Yes. And how do you, how do you and Mary and Marino mm -hmm. deal with those people? What do you, what are the first steps you take in trying to reach them to allow them to uh, connect to their past? What do you do? Connecting with the past, uh, if it has a higher purpose, which is healing, is an excellent tool. How first, pe those people with, with whatever problems they have in life, they can first gain awareness of who they are, who they were in the past, and what were they doing. That may help them to, do, to go through the cleansing process, and hopefully they, that may help them to embark on the, uh, on the betterment of themselves. On the, it, they may start the process where they would amend the evil ways they did in the past or they're still doing in the present. How do we do that? The easiest, I mean, the way did we do it is through art. Because the, uh, the easiest and the most innocent way to touch people's heart is through art. Your, uh, your heart was touched by my trailer, by my book trailer, because I invested love into that, because I want to pass the message. I want to help people. And you can feel the energy. Energy is everything. If you invest positive, loving energy into something, it will reflect on whatever product, yeah. whatever project you do. And that's exactly what we do. Marino does that through his music. I do through my writing, primarily. But there's also other artists and other members of our team who work on our project, Mission of Love, that, uh, that intends to uh, raise the frequency levels of uh, vibration of the humanity to a higher. Basically, in, in a, to simplify it, we try to make this world a better place. We try to teach people about the, the real values, the positive values. We try to spread the message of love through art and through spiritual uh, teachings called timeless wisdom. Th that is the foundation of the project that we work on. These books are just, my books are part of that project and uh, they, uh, uh, they are also, there's a lot of uh, principles that Marina wrote that are intertwined principles of eternal truth, which is a skeleton, skeleton of the teachings, timeless wisdom, uh, they're intertwined in the story, story about Gen Zen and other people, because there's a huge group of people who were with us in the time of Jesus to the present. Yes. My, by the way, there's another thing I want to ask you about. My friend Bill Crane, who's a professor of psychology, who, believe me, does deal with the problems of human beings, mm -hmm. has an animal sanctuary in Long Island. And he's been discovering astounding things regarding all animals, even animals we generally don't pay any attention to, like chickens and turkeys and so on. And he finds that they respond to love warmth, sensitivity. Yes. Will you say something about the animal spirits and the spirits that are within animals? Spirit, animal, animal, animal kingdom is a separate kingdom fr from uh, human spirits. But they are, th th so I do not believe the teachings that I follow say that the spirit of an animal cannot reincarnate in the spirit in in the body in a human body and vice versa but animals of course they they have very strong receptors the animal kingdom is very connected to um, to this cosmic consciousness ah. more connected than we can even imagine they have the, the one just proof is that experiment that they did with 12 monkeys if you heard about that experiment when they tried to teach monkeys how to reach for banana that was too high they gave them uh, the experiment was done in an isolated island with tw with 12 monkeys and when they finally after days 
monkeys figured out they use their intelligent abil intelligence to figure out how to reach for that banana believe it or not there were other on other parts of the world monkeys that were using exact the same solution which proves that we are all connected when when we uh, when we get you know th when there's a solution that springs in our mind it is not only in our mind it happens on a higher level that is called uh, collective consciousness and animals are so connected to this collective consciousness and they certainly have a very open very developed receptors to to pers to to feel something as pure as love they will always respond to love love is the most the highest uh, the highest value the most powerful energy that exists and everything in the universe reacts to that energy there's nothing more profound as pure genuine love loving kindness energy of loving kindness there's nothing more profound and and higher than that yeah yeah you're very um, you're very you have a lot of information and even let me tell let me speak to some of the cynics out there uh, on a on a true detective story on television uh, the only clue they had were cats from the su suspects cat mm -hmm. so uh, they found the only person in North America who does DNA on cats wow. and he found the DNA on this cat on the victim and then he got the suspects cat and lo and behold the DNA matched <laughs> so the defense attorney said yeah but cats are a simpler organism I'm sure that if you had 150 cats, they would all have the same DNA. So they did the DNA on 150 cats. Wow. And they proved that they were all different. Of course. So of animals course. are individual, Absolutely. very individual. Absolutely. And they have their spirit that, as well as human spirit, we evolve. We evolve from one human experience to another, as well as, sp uh, as, well as the spirit of an animal evolves, maybe from some simpler animal forms to more intelligent animal forms like dogs, for example. Dogs are on a higher level spiritually than maybe some uh, amoebas, you know. But yes, they also have evolution as well as we do. Okay, so you, you're Gia, Gia? and Marino mm -hmm. is Zen. Yes. Okay, now you discovered you have clues of what your mission are. Yes. Now, what is your mission, and what are you trying to do here and now for yourselves and humanity? Uh, I've discovered my mission. I had a feeling, and um, intuitively, I was uh, always, as a little girl, I was always feeling that I'm here to help other people. I had that intuitive in me. That was my spirit speaking to me through my intuition. But now I, uh, I'm very grateful that I reached the level where, uh, through, where I know exactly what my mission is and what the mission of this project is. And that is to, uh, to bring about healing, healing through art and to pass the, the teachings of timeless wisdom, of, of the truth that always was, is, and always will be. Something that d d does not confine in, the, in, the, in, the, in the frames of time, something that is timeless and uh, to inspire people to be more gentle to each other to be more loving to be more giving that is my mission and I, I also part of my mission is to present Zen to the world because uh, Zen is very it's very evolved very highly evolved spirit who came on this earth again to uh, carry on the mission that was planted while one of the greatest um, teachers that ever walked on earth Jesus uh, lived uh, so that he was a privileged uh, Marina Frost in this life and Zen in my book collection was a little boy who had experience with Jesus 2,000 years ago actually Jesus put his hands on his stomach and revived him otherwise this boy would die and since that point on 
they became in, insepar insep inseparate friends and uh, this boy was part of his flock and was and he learned the teachings of Jesus firsthand and I believe that many many principles that he's uh, passing on to humanity now are actually gen generated from the time when he was learning those highly evolved knowledge and teachings from the f first hand from one of the greatest teachers who ever walked on earth, Jesus. Yeah, I, uh, I attended a lecture that Alan Steinfeld organized with Miha, where he did How Jesus Became a Christ. Mm -hmm. And you know, my Miha is a Roman Catholic P priest who used to uh, teach on the campus of Ramta, you know, mm -hmm. and so on. That was that was a fascinating lecture. And Mihap is an Irish Roman Catholic priest who is just fascinating. I mean, one of the most fascinating things he says is, God does not keep score. <laughs> he's, not, he's not like Santa Claus. He doesn't <laughs> care who's good and who's bad and what sin you committed and so on. In fact, what sin you committed may f even fall into the pattern of the universe, you know, and 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 so on. Well, anyway, uh, what I think we have, yes, we have about two minutes, and I want to say to the audience, if you haven't come down here to uh, enjoy the pattern of Manhattan Neighborhood Network, you're making a terrible mistake. This place is so exciting. Whether you watch the exposés of Dean Lauren, or you watch the spiritual shows of Yoga Express, or you go into uh, the conversations of Harold uh, Hudson Channel, who's always talking about transcending scarcity, but down here there's no scarcity of imagination or creativity. And this has been the Josh Walensky Show. And as usual, I would like to hear from Gabriella and whatever you want to share with the audience. Thank you, Josh. This was so wonderful. I love the way you wrap this up. And just I want to mention that for everybody who may be interested in reading my books, they can easily find them online on lulu.com and amazon.com. And um, I just want to express all my love to all the audience that is out there and invite them to embark on a journey towards the light of knowledge and to become the passengers on the, of the train that I'm, then I travel on, a train that goes to light. I'm a train on the tracks that goes to light and I invite all good souls to embark on that train. Thank you, oh, Josh. That's so beautiful, really. It's beautifully articulated. And I'll tell you, it's, I really feel bad that Marina didn't, your partner <laughs> in time and space, didn't come in here. I should In the <laughs> next show. <laughs> yeah, but that'll be the next show. Yes. And look at that wonderful background. That's the very essence of Gia. That's beautiful mandala. <laughs> yeah. Beautiful yeah, mandala. Beautiful, beautiful and uh, come down here, get certified. But you know, even if you're not certified, you can submit a show. Like my friend Shireen, she was never certified. She was submi submitting a show for about two years. Like Marina Frost, he submitted his interview, Mission yeah, of Love, yeah. the one you saw. It was played on Eminem. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And here are these two wonderful books. Do come down, enjoy them. We'll let you read them here, too. <laughs> 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 yeah, yeah. And what are the two na next ones uh, coming Life up? Life in uh, Chicago is the next one, and uh, uh, Life with Jesus, of course, and Jesus, recon yeah. Reconnecting with the Past. Yeah, yeah. Jesus can be a profound experience, uh, regardless of what your religion is, believe it or not believe it or not. Well, he never belonged to, I mean, he, he did not come to uh, start the religion. He came to on, he, on earth to pass the message of love. 
Yeah. But it's uh, it's in the later years that um, uh, religious leaders took a copyright on him. Yes. Okay. Thank you very much. <laughs> and uh, you know what those signals were about? <laughs> I think we did it, right? I don't know. <laughs> yeah. But anyway, oh. Uh, oh yeah, we had a few more minutes. Yeah. Okay. And look <laughs> at these credits and so on. We have plenty to say here. You know, um, you know, like a very famous man said, I think it was Karl Marx, he said, nothing is alien to me. Thank you.